you know, invariably you're going to have problems when you're into it, but if you can minimize those, you want to. So first place to start, obviously you've spent a lot of time thinking about what your site looks like and it's probably sitting somewhere up in your head. Um, you want to write it down. I actually went through my own files and I had a nice smile when I looked at some of the diagrams I did. They were, you know, a lot of the, the mock-ups, you know, they were very helpful for me to understand how my site was going to work. I, you know, there's a bunch of different versions of this. But my site ended up getting a lot better on paper and just made a lot of discoveries. Um, if you're in a collaborative environment, you may want to use, even if you're not, there's a nice tool that I have been working with called Mockingbird, which they'll build uh, wireframes for you. Um, this is a great little tool, and uh, it's, it's just really simple. It snaps a lot of things. One of the things that, that I like about this tool, too, especially if you're new to, to web building and web design, is um, if you just kind of scroll through, they have a lot of things that they think you probably want. Um, you can, you know, if you're building your own theme, you can begin to kind of get ideas from this as well, which is... Uh, really helpful, especially at the beginning, is you're maybe not as confident in what you're doing. Um, so, you know, obviously when you're mapping out the, the ideas, you want to kind of know where you're heading. Um, because you don't want to be discovering that as you're building your pages. You don't want to be discovering that as you're making the code. That's obviously going to be uh, challenging already. Um, another just great tip that I found, and you know, when I had built most models for 2010, obviously didn't exist, but you know, I did look through, and some of the things are, are, you know, files are updated and all. I would go into 2010, and I would literally print out these files, um, and I would look at them and learn from them, and I'll just show you real quick how to do that. Um, because The idea is, you know, these people are probably better at building themes than you are. In fact, this is the new default theme for WordPress. So you, you want to take advantage of this. This is a really nice opportunity to, to kind of learn how to do it. Um, Uh, 
And then of course Google. Google is you know great. I had uh, one of my things that I needed that I ended up finding on Google was how to put multiple loops on a single page. Uh, and you know Google is amazing that way. And Google is you know in terms of WordPress, you know it's another great way to find all these other sites that have spent a lot of time uh, thinking about the problems that you have. Um, so we're pretty close at this point to starting to build you know our theme. So obviously we should talk about the loop because the loop is a is a big kind of component of WordPress. When we first come to WordPress. You know, the loop intimidated me to no end. It was very confusing. And I, I'm not going to pretend that I understand the loop entirely, but I do understand what it does. And it, it, it literally, it sits there and it controls how the dynamic content is displayed on your site. Um, and you can then add different code in there to make it do different things. And you can go to the codex or the forum on WordPress to find how to make all those things really happen for you. Um, most, most, I kind of went a little crazy. <laughs> See, I had a lot of loops here. Um, and that was, you know, one of the fun challenges when I built the site, was to figure out how this all worked. And then I take a lot of these loops and, you know, I have them do different things on different pages. But the idea is, is really there. So on my single, on my blog, if the loop functions totally differently here, it just pulls post for the blogs and it, it, you know, unlike on the main page, it actually gives some description. Uh, you can tell the loop dates, you can tell the loop to include literally whatever you want. Um, yeah. The loop is the, uh, probably the best place to find what the loop does is to look at what it But what it does is it defines how your, your dynamic content is served up on the various pages. That's, I think, the easiest way to describe it. So, so on my site, I have a bunch of different loops, as I pointed out. Um, and so I have, um, and we'll talk a little bit about categories, and these guys right before us talked about them as well, uh, probably more efficiently than I can. But the idea is, so I have, for my, for my US news section is a good example, you need to put this content in some way of a chronological date order for my site. I can't have content from three weeks ago showing up at the top left section. I need the most recent. Um, and I can't have just the most recent on the left-hand column. It kind of the way I orchestrated the site, it all presses down. So I have one loop that just goes, I think it's called US News Left. And it says for five posts, says, I literally say, I want five posts to show up here. And that's a loop. Um, to and, answer and these it. are like um, some, some sort of feature, <coughs> unbeknownst to you, you uh, program this content to pull from not your own database, but some sort of news feed from no, other these, sites? Th that's a, no, this is, we're actually going out and sourcing this content. We're going out to find, we're not using feeds, but that, that's a separate question. The way it's served is through PHP. So the loop says, you know, here's the header. Then it says also, uh, here's, you know, this section of content. And then it says, here's a, a different loop for US middle or for US left or for US right. And it just keeps on making new loops for each different section, depending on what I want it to do. Um, over here, I have a different loop that just gives me the titles. For the, for the lists and for my blog posts and various groups I can have do various different things. And I'm not really here to talk about, per se, groups other than to say that they're a great resource and you just kind of want to have a sense of them as you're heading in to, uh, to what you're doing. So. And, and various themes that you might find will already have a loop. Themes, yeah. yeah. Most, themes, most themes will have a loop. Uh, Primarily, they assume that you want your blog to be on your main page, um, and so they'll build in the loop. You won't necessarily know if you're purchasing a, a theme that the loop is there. It's all happening in the back end when it is there, and all those files. So if you go and look at 2010, if you want to learn how the loop works, that's probably the best place to do it. 2010 is the default theme for a new WordPress. Why install. use a loop? Otherwise, your, your site doesn't know how to serve up the content. 
Because when you put in a new blog post, you want that to show up at the top, right? So the loop is what's going to tell it to do that. Um, so, you know, another thing you're going to obviously want to look at is the WordPress dashboard. Um, let me just pop this up. And you can get a sense of, again, you're, you're just trying to figure out how you want your content to, to live. Um, most of the time you're going to be spending, you know, creating new posts. Obviously, you're not going to be creating a lot of new pages. And so new posts in particular, you're going to want to really look at. You can see on most most, this is, you know, again, business left, business middle, business right. And it just kind of keeps on going down. And wherever I kind of create my content, I'll then assign it to a certain specific place, and then when somebody goes to my website, that's what they're actually going to see, is the content in the order I told them to do. Um, and again, just philosophically, you guys want to be aware of that as you're going in to build your site, because you, you're just going to want to think about those things. The more kind of time you can understand those things, the better for you in, in the, the short run. When you showed your admin dashboard, Livia configuration uh, is this, uh, it's a neat little toolbar. It's a, that's a plugin, yeah. There, this bottom thing here, this is the Livia toolbar. This is an add-on, this is a light plugin. Um, this is, you know, obviously anybody can go to Livia and get it. It's a really nice little tool. It's, it's you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on design, but just kind of one observation I made. Originally, I had a gray, I made that movie toolbar gray, and it was kind of, you know, submerged a little. When I made it red, it just seemed to bring out a lot more color in the entire site. You, you print it out, you, you decide what you want it on. Yes, that's, if you go to Wibia.com, you can, that's a, a tool that, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. And, just as we're talking about it, and, you know, you can add what you want there. So people have an easy way to, to go social with most most. Uh, they can follow me on Twitter. They can like me. They can tweet about it. Um, so it's a pretty nifty little tool. It's maybe one step below Facebook Connect, but it's a, it's I, I'm pretty impressed by it. Um, and so yeah, to answer your question, the link your toolbar, then you can configure some of it here. Some of it you have to go to Wibia to configure as well. Um, I think the main thing they ask for here is you've got to put in the authorization code on um, most most that they can link up to your, your site. Uh, you know, FTP is another kind of big mystery, at least when you first start out. Uh, I remember just being utterly confused and confounded by it. I like to use FileZilla. It's an open source. Um, very stable, it's always working. What's going to happen with FTP is literally it's, it's file transfer protocol. It's, you're moving sites, you're moving files from your desktop over to your server so that WordPress can build them. And as you're building a new theme, you're going to want to start to, to consider all those, say, your index page, your sidebars, your whatever, all those things, you have to somehow put them into your site so that your server can build those. Um, you're going to use an FTP to do that. WordPress may have since had a, an easier way to do it. I don't really know the answer to that. Um, plugins, obviously, a lot of people spend a lot of time talking about plugins today. Um, there's a lot of really strong ones. All of my SEO seems to be one that people are talking about the most, and certainly I use that on most posts as well. Um, the easiest way to look at plugins is to just go to the plugin page and work on most most and, or on WordPress or another and you can kind of get a sense of what you'd like to, to install. Um, as you're beginning to build your theme, you know, I would spend a lot of time or at least some time thinking about needs versus wants. Um, if you need something in order to make your theme work, I would use it if you want to make it, if you want it just because you think it's really cool and it might be a, an, a, an addition. You may want to hold off on it until you get your theme up and you really start to kick the tires on it. Dave, is this an e-commerce site? Can people actually buy stuff from you? Or no. are they just reading content? They're just picking it to where it's the new site, so we don't 
himself, you know, uh, an experience. Um, so obviously, you know, there's this whole other component to building a theme, which deals with design, which is HTML and CSS. Uh, you know, that, that is what you make of it, and obviously you need some skill, but you don't necessarily, like the, the panelists that were just here, I would say that they're all expert in, in design. Um, you know, most, most is, it's a nice site, but it, it certainly could uh, afford to get redesigned. Um, and, I, and I get that. One of the nice tools, though, that I do want to share with you guys is on Firefox, there is a, there's a, an addition called Firebug, an add-on, Firefox browser. Um, and you can then add a different piece on, which is, I forget what it's called, but the idea is it's the, you want this box. And so if I go and I go, and I can do this on any site, not just most most, I can hover over something, and then you can see on the right-hand side, it's telling me what the CSS is. It's a really great way to learn how to design a site. Uh, it's just, it's really powerful. And I don't know if Google Chrome has a similar thing. I've heard that they might. Just have to They have an inspect element one. Uh -huh. When you hover over, like, say, the div tag, yeah. it highlights the div tag in blue. It'll, like, uh, highlight the margins and the green. So you can uh -huh. check margins, padding, div, all at the same time. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not about for Chrome. Yeah. It's also web developer by Better thing that's all I got. Uh -huh. That does something similar for uh, Firefox. Okay. Uh, very popular. Um, very cool. So, you know, as you're kind of, you're about to be spending a lot of time doing a lot of things, especially if this is your first feed, that um, you're maybe not totally comfortable with. And I can tell you that one of the things you're probably going to want to use is Firefox. Um, and if you are using Firefox, and Chrome has these as well, uh, they have a, a, just a ton of great shortcuts. Uh, learn them and use them, because they're going to take a lot of time out of your life. Uh, instead of having to go and click on your, your nav bar, just control L. Um, that works on Chrome as well. Uh, if I want to go see a new page, just control page up, page down. If I want to add a tab, control T, and then I'm right there. Uh, I just point that out because you're going to be doing a lot of research and you know a lot of things for the rest of my life as well. But it's just a uh, it's one of those things that you don't realize how much time you're spending doing something maybe uh, in a different way. Um, if your computer is not plugged in and mine's not, uh, you can do the F N button, which is right next to Control, and then hit the up arrow. And any of you can do that right now. And hit Command and the up arrow and it'll make it brighter or darker. Probably want to make your screen brighter. It's just one of those things that makes your life a lot easier. Uh, no pet flush. People have talked about Photoshop. Photoshop is very expensive. If any of you have looked, like the last time I looked at it, it was about 600 bucks. There's an open source version. It's not, I shouldn't say it's an open source version, but it's a similar type of site called GIMP. Uh, that'll do a lot of that functionality for you. So, you know, it might be something to consider. It might even be easier places to, you know, edit your different pictures and whatnot. Just uh, putting it out there. Files that we already talked about. Um, so a couple of mistakes that I made as I kind of got into this theme way back, you know, about 18 months ago. Uh, first thing was I wasn't using sidebars correctly. Uh, sidebars are super powerful. I would just spend some time looking at how they work. Um, you start with 2010 and you can begin to see. Because uh, if you're building your own thing, you're going to want to take advantage of sidebars probably. And you're going to want them to work for you. Um, you know, on my homepage, a good example of using sidebars incorrectly, uh, this section here. Is my, it's technically it's a sidebar, but actually it's just the second column. Um, I'm not going to go through and redo all of my, you know, that's a fairly big job for me at this point to do, just because my design chops are what they are, etc. But if I had started from the beginning and done that, I would have felt much more inclined to actually do it correctly. 
Um, so I just put that out there for you guys. Um, pages versus categories. Um, you know, this panel just before they talked about pages and categories, and so it turns out maybe I did use categories correctly, uh, <laughs> which is nice to know. But these are all categories up here. So like U.S. News is a category, um, et, et cetera. And, and then I ask it, each category to do different things. So I have, you know, here's my, my loop right here. And I have, this is a sidebar. And I have a bunch of different widgets that I put in here. And then I have a sidebar of links um, that I put here. So apparently that's okay. Uh, this is I built this template. That, that's it's most most. I mean, I, I yeah, it's my template. And that's kind of the idea. If you're going to build a template, we want to think about all these things. And I'm not saying that you definitely want to build a template, but it's a lot of fun to do. It's very rewarding. Uh, it's a pretty amazing experience. Uh, and what it, what it ultimately did was allow me to be much more competent in WordPress in general, just through, particularly through my mistakes. Uh, you know, I probably, in the beginning, didn't spend enough time on the forum, which is okay. And, you know, eventually I got to this realization that it's okay not to be perfect and you should get it up. Um, the biggest thing I'll say is just have fun doing it. It's a, it's a pretty, neat, pretty neat process. So, Almost at the end here, I just want to do a little bit of bragging, particularly for WordPress, um, because it's pretty neat. Right as I was contacting Austin, I uh, literally the night before, I said, oh, I can actually talk about this. I'm super excited about WordPress, and if they have me, I'd love to. But uh, <coughs> most is over 10,000 posts now. Um, that's all on the back of WordPress. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I give credit to WordPress for being to me, but nonetheless, it's uh, it's it's a pretty good, I think, testimonial for how strong the platform is. What kind of traffic do you get? Not a lot. I you know I love this site, and it's a big passion of mine. A lot of you know, the place where I make my money is with uh, social media marketing and digital planning. And, you know, I tell my clients when they're ready to build a new site, um, they say, don't hire me to build your site. Let's get somebody like the people who are sitting here, this gentleman, do your site correctly. Uh, I could build your site and I'll muscle through it and, and et cetera. But, you know, if you're going to actually build a professional site, you want to. Want to have a professional do it. Um, so that's kind of the long and short of it. There I am on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Uh, I have my own personal Twitter as well. You know, it, it's been a lot of fun. Go to my own thing, it's been a great experience. Uh, I've actually brought on a couple of people to help contribute content to most modes, which has been amazing. It's, Train them on how to use WordPress on most most themes. And it's all been uh, really excited about doing it, and um, it's just a real joy. It's kind of one of those powerful moments in your life when you realize you can do this. Uh, you know, it's just amazing. So there it is.
one second. Sorry. Does anybody have a mini port to VGA? Upstairs. Upstairs. Did you put it back upstairs? Oh, yeah. No, but I just switched this one down here. There's a mini port to DVI upstairs, but no VGA. I got one. Oh, oh. You got one? Yeah. Oh, thank you.
So you see, I think right now one of the biggest trends in just design in general is the big oversized header. It's just so much more appealing to the eye. Um, and then I also have like all of these are clickable, and I'll show you the actual site live after I've gotten through this. But they each will, this links back to the main Suicide Girls site. I believe this one links to the modeling page. This links to a download. Um, so you kind of want what the people see when they first come to the page to just be about your brand. I don't like it, and a lot of people, most, most people do this. I don't want to see any ads when I land on the page. I, I, I personally will leave unless I'm there for a reason. What is Suicide Girls? Suicide Girls, um, it is an online community. Um, it is modern pinup, so the girls are eventually naked in the photo sets. Um, but, but, so that was one of the things though, like I wanted to make the blog a safe for work portal so that people who want to interact with the brand who maybe don't have a membership yet can start engaging with the brand on the blog. Um, and if they like us here, um, there's a bajillion ways on the site that they will be sent back to the main site, um, only really if they want to. And um, then hopefully they'll subscribe or buy a movie or, you know, be your fan. So, um, so, okay. Um, so one of the things that um, we do right there in the header that I showed you on the week in here is to incorporate our promotions. Um, the theme that we're using, which I got from Bean Forest, I believe, it's, it was a pretty something, I don't remember to be honest, but um, it was very reasonable, I think it was like $35 or something. And then I skinned it out with their branding, their background, and then this we made, um, this is what happens if you click here, you can also click here and here. But you should incorporate any promotions in a visible place. I have a question before you. How can we tell these are promotions? I mean, I've seen from all the products, we don't mind stocking. Um, but these we, other things. Let me bring up the actual site. Michael Moore to 
uh, I mean, everyone, every celebrity you can think of has pretty much been interviewed by them. So, that being said, okay, Tattoo Tuesday is one of the promotions that we do on Twitter, MySpace, and Tumblr. And before we had the WordPress blog, um, I didn't really have a plan for things like this. Because again, since the site was membership, where am I going to send everyone to? So, um, Tattoo Tuesday is a promotion that we do where on Twitter they tweet us a picture of their tattoos, because tattoos are a huge part of the brand, and they use the hashtag Tattoo Tuesday, and we pick our favorite and they get a free three month membership. We also do it on Tumblr and MySpace. And then the way that I <clears throat> pull it back to the blog is every Friday when we announce the winners, I do a blog post, and in the blog post I show, and I'll show you that in a little, um, in the blog post I do the Tattoo Tuesday Roundup, and we show the winner from each place, and on, like, you'll see just the gist of what the Tattoo Tuesday is, and it says from Twitter, where it says Twitter, there's actually a link to our Twitter, but if you click on the picture, it takes you to the winner. And, it, and we show the same for Tumblr and MySpace as well. Sharing, and this is, this is my favorite. Um, we use the Socialize plugin for social sharing. Um, to be honest, it was not my first choice. Um, the reason why um, I liked the Socialize plugin as a second choice was because I've read articles that state that when people can see how many retweets, how many shares, how many whatever, they're more likely to share it themselves. I don't understand why, that's more of a psychology thing, but it's true. My first pick was um, Sexy Bookmarks, which is what I use on all of my other sites. Um, on my personal site, on my fashion site, on my subculture site, I use Sexy Bookmarks. It's just cuter. I can show it to you after I get through the video. But um, what I don't like about Socialize is that I use Bitly. Um, do we all know what Bitly is? Well, tell us. Okay, Bitly, Bitly is um, it's, it's a couple things. One is it shortens your links. Because when you're tweeting, you don't need this like 8,000 character length or something to fit, taking up all your space. Um, and the other thing that I like about Bitly versus other social sharing link shortening tools is that um, Bitly also lets you track how many times this link has been clicked on, um, analytics basically on your links. And so that's very useful from a marketing perspective. It just lets me know, you know, I could do a Tattoo Tuesday tweet in three different ways and find out which one got the most clicks and try to analyze this because of the time of day, because of the way I worded the tweet, and just, you know, you want to really get as many metrics as you can. So anything that offers you analytics, you should try to use. Um, and Sexy Bookmarks lets you incorporate your Bitly. Bitly will give you an API, and you can plug in your API and your username, and it's that simple. And then when people tweet from your blog, the Bitly link is what will go out so that you're able to track their links as well. So how about your Facebook is like strong enough with YouTube as well? Um, it's actually, you, you find that it's usually the opposite? Yeah, it's YouTube as well. That's of what we're looking at. I don't understand what we're marking. I mean, well, this is a screenshot from like one blog post, um, but it actually fluctuates, but we do get significantly more traffic from Facebook than Twitter, and I'll tell you why. Um, we've got 700,000 people plus following our Facebook, and we've got 45,000 people or so following our Twitter. So that's that's why that is. It's, it's really the ratio more than, I mean, if we had 700,000 people following our Twitter, I'm sure that number would be much different. And it also depends on the post as well. Um, and then on MySpace, believe it or not, we actually have 1.75 million people following us on MySpace, and everybody wants to say how dead that MySpace is. And yet, when I got the gig doing their marketing, I can't can't ignore 1.75 million people. You can't pretend that's not there. You can't go. I'm not going to engage with them. It's MySpace, and that's so five years ago. You can't do that. So um, it's it's unfortunate that Socialize doesn't have a fancy MySpace one as well. Another reason that I like to use sexy bookmarks. In fact, let me just show you that now, so you guys can see why I like sexy bookmarks so much. Besides the fact that it's called sexy bookmarks. <laughs> Shameless self promotion. This is my personal website. I'm not on anymore, obviously. Um, okay. okay, so this is what sexy go 
Mars looks like. It just looks super clean. And um, if you have more, it, it'll give you, there's like hundreds of options of sites that you can add here. Um, and if you have more than this number, what will happen is it'll still look like this when you land, but when you mouse over, this will actually expand, and you'll see all the rest of them. And um, so if you Twitter, I've incorporated my Bitly, and you see it just, that's what it does. So this is super useful, because it's one thing if I want to track the link once I send it out, but you know, all of you guys send them to the link out, I want to know that, I want to know where the pages are coming from. So that, that helps me track it. If you do share this, you can get the uh, analytics and the counts. I, I mean, you know, that yeah, there's, there's so many options for, for sharing. Um, I happen to stick with Sexy Bookmarks since I like it, and I just like how it looks. It's really clean. I mean, like really, you saw how Sexy Bookmarks looks, and then, and this is how Socialize looks. And um, I added this image in, because without it, it just looked awkward, to be honest. And like, they're not necessarily centered perfectly, um, which kind of bugs me. I, I, it's, I'm not in love with it, but it's useful. And the reason why I actually had to use Socialize is because when I plugged in Sexy Bookmarks, it wasn't working with our theme. So maybe I can get someone here today that could help us with that, because I'd love to know a bit of Socialize. Not to bash <laughs> Socialize, it's just to visit. Okay. So I added that picture also just to bring the eye there. Um, so there's a few things on the site that I find really useful, and I wanted to try to talk about things that everybody doesn't know about. I'm a big, huge fan of Echo. Have you guys heard of Echo? It's super awesome. Um, they used to be known as JS Kit once upon a time, um, but now if you go to About Echo, you can find out about them. And what they are is it's, it's, it's the next generation of commenting. Um, WordPress gives you certain commenting built into the site, and you can thread the comments, and, but it's really not that sophisticated, to be honest. Um, so here's what Echo does. We have two, we have Echo in two ways. There's actually, they just came out with Echo River, which is different, we don't have it on the site yet. But this is what our commenting looks like. And you can see, not just comments are showing up, tweets are showing up too. And this increases your comment count, and that just makes you look good. That's just the truth. Um, beyond that, on the main page of the site, on the front page, when you scroll down just a little bit beyond the branding, you'll see we have this latest buzz. And in real time, it's going to show you where things are being shared, what comments are being left on the site without you having to reload, reload your page. So if somebody's reading a blog post, and you know, and then they see over there a little, it'll, you know, a new thing will pop up, and maybe it's a comment that interests them, or maybe they're looking at the main page and they're like, you know, just browsing around and they don't know which post they want to go to, they might see something there that catches their eye. Um, I also like the fact that. If you comment with Echo as well, and I'll show you on the site. Is that pretty easy to install? Echo is very easy to install. Echo is not a free service. You do get a free 30-day trial. Um, but it's, it's reasonable and it's based on your traffic. So it's to scale in that respect. Um, but I mean, if, so if you're blogging as a hobby, you might not want to do this. But if you're taking your blog seriously, if it's for a brand, if it's, you know, I take, I have a fashion website that I've had since 2007. I used to take much more seriously than I do now because I don't have time, unfortunately. But if you're trying to actually make money off the site or build a brand with the site or use the site, it depends on your goal. But if it's a hobby site, you might not need it. Have you compared it to Discus? I do not care for Discus very much, and I'll tell you why. Um, you should be able to own your content. Okay, You should be able to take that content with you no matter where you go or what you do. And I'm all about anything that lets you do that, and I am very anti-Facebook. Closed. I'm very anti anything that is closed. Um, I just don't like it as far as internet ethics go. Okay. Well, it tends to be. It tends to be. Isn't that a little different? Isn't it tends to be like actually two people having a, a debate about a certain topic? Because I have heard it, but I'm not intensely. Okay. okay. Right. But isn't it? It's, isn't it commenting? It's specifically yeah. commenting. I'm not sure, but I will tell you that there is nothing else like Echo, for sure. Um, I'll show you. Okay, so here's what it looks like when you're logged in. I can say that the JS comment thing on Joomla is a disaster. I've never used Joomla. Yeah, 
I never used Joomla, and I I have used Echo on WordPress, and I have had no problems with it. Yes. You still own your comments. In other words, if you have discuss and you get rid of discuss, your comments are gone. Okay, and that's bad. Yes. That's bad. So if you plug in Echo and you decide I don't want to use Echo anymore, and you take Echo off, your comments have remained, and they'll still be right there in your blog as just normal WordPress comments, and anything you do from there is is standard. So what I like about this is right here it says share, uh, share this page. I can also say share with my Twitter followers. And then I can say blah, blah, blah. And then if I post that, um, what's going to happen is it's going to share this comment not only on the site here in the comments, but it's also going to send a tweet to, from my Twitter stream from me that says blah, 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 and a link back to this post. That will help you with viral spreading of your content like you don't believe. Are, are, are you finding that your users are actually using that? They're some of them do and some of them don't. To get it you, you can um, auto set it to do that, but I don't like that because right. I think that's spammy. And so you want to make sure that like you want to offer people the options to share things. You don't want to force them to share links. I don't like it when something tweets from my account without making it ridiculously, I want a pop-up window, and I want to have to check three things in order for you to send something to my account. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, so I've chosen not to make it auto-tweet for them, but to give the users the option. And they also have the option to share it in other places as well. Is this a Echo? Sorry? Is that Echo? This is, this is Echo. And then if we scroll down, you'll see you can also add images to your comments. Why don't you have Facebook? Um, share on Facebook? They offer that, but um, yeah, they offer that, but the reason why we don't have that on there yet is because um, the co founder has to do that and actually asked her to set it up like three months ago. So that's why that's not up yet. Um, what about but Facebook Live sequence text? The Facebook Live is. We're gonna, I'll, I'll get into the Wibia in a minute, but the Facebook like is actually, in, it's not showing it. right now. But we have that Wibia toolbar on the bottom as well, and that's where we keep the Facebook like. And that's, that'll show up by every page. So, like that. um, so that's the Echo stuff. Um, is there anything else that I need to talk about today? Um, yeah. What Period or for the links and um, no, and all the social media, um, so you know, YouTube, Twitter. Um, I mean, I use I use Google and I use Comcast. Um, I'm not using you know like Radius or any crazy thing like that. What was the question? Um, analytics, tracking your social metrics with analytics. If you're using Google Analytics, I use Google Analytics and I look at and I look at traffic sources and I graph that myself. Um, it, it, it is extra time, but I mean, I track like why would I do it on my days? You know, um, just realistically, I I base just on it as a side. I mean, I base how much I put into what I do for a client on what they're paying. So in a perfect world, like I love their brand. If they could pay my asking price, I would love to work for them full time and totally kick butt and do every single thing and pay for radius and have all these extra. But that's not the way it works in the real world. In the real world, the client's gonna say, I can spend X on social. What are you gonna do? Right. And so I have to make that work, you know, and, and so if it's gonna if something is gonna be an expense for me, I got I mean it really it doesn't it's not that hard, I find. And they just just to give you a little bit about them, their main site gets five an average of five million views a month, an average of twenty-five million page views a month. Um, their brand has been around for almost ten years. They have movies, uh, one of which is airing on Showtime right now, one of which is on On Demand right now. So they're a really big brand. But for whatever reason, they, you know, that's the thing with, with social marketing. It, even with a big brand, first of all, just because a brand is big doesn't mean that they're a movie. Especially in this economy. Um, you know, just because you manage to keep your business around for a decade, it doesn't mean that you're rolling in the 